back. It's the final day of CES. I'm Bill Detweiler, and this is my partner in crime, Jason Heiner. Uh, I'm managing editor of Tech Republic, and I like to take products apart and see what makes them tick, if you will. Uh, today we're going to crack open a hoverboard, uh, or more appropriately called a self-balancing scooter, to see what's inside of them and to uh, explain sort of what's going on with the fires. Has everybody out here heard about the fires that are happening with the hoverboards, right? Okay, so yeah. what I'm going to do is we're going to take one apart, we're going to look at components inside of the board and try to show people why they're catching fire uh, and hopefully make everybody a little bit more safe. So while I'm doing this, uh, Jason is going to do the play-by-play -play here. Yes. Um, Jason, can tell everybody why we take things apart. Oh, and just in case anybody's worried about a fire on the stage, right now we have Katie over here uh, with the fire extinguisher. So if Thank anything you, were to burst into flames, she's going to run up here and put it out. But hopefully, hopefully we won't have that happen. All right, so Jason, why have we been taking things apart all these years? So we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, we've, we started doing these in 2006. Uh, and the, you know, the first couple of things that we took apart were the uh, Xbox uh, right. and before Xbox 360. Uh, or this was right about the time the Xbox 360, the first one was, was coming out. Um, and the iPod, well the iPod mini at that time. Um, and we have a, a, an audience at Tech Republic that's very uh, technically um, curious. And we, uh, we simply took them apart because there were always questions, especially back in that time in tech, there were lots of questions about um, you know, what processors were used, how much storage, what vendors were involved, and we would take these things apart. We'd look at the chips that were inside, look at the technology that was inside, and we'd break it down. Okay, so we've got the first, so I'll, I'll say this, I fudged a little bit, I cheated, I took some of the screws out in the, F, in, the uh, uh, in order to save time, and usually we use really, really small screws and tools like this, but today we brought out the power tools. Um, now that we've got the cowlings off, they come off pretty easily. There's yes. just a bunch of screws inside. Now, this is the most important thing. People, if you're going to do this at home, and I do not recommend it, please don't try this at home. No. Um, the first thing you want to do whenever you're taking apart something that's uh, electric is to disconnect the battery. So you guys can see, I'm going to try to, they're, sh they're shooting it in the camera, so I don't know if you can see up on the screen or not. I'll tilt it forward just a little bit. This large uh, object here is the battery. This is a large lithium ion battery, and this is what's responsible for the fire. So the first thing I'm going to do before I touch anything else inside of this is I'm going to disconnect the battery. That will hopefully prevent me from getting electrocuted and from uh, a fire starting. And now, Bill's cracked open a lot of devices, never had a fire, never electrocuted no, yourself, still got thankfully. All my ten fingers, ten toes. Um, but it's these batteries that are what's causing uh, the fire. And then we're going to talk about the hardware a little bit inside. Um, there's, there's a couple reasons why these batteries can catch fire. One is, if I were to take something that's like this, really sharp, uh, and start poking these batteries, it would expose the chemicals inside the batteries, and that is bad. That'll cause yes. batteries to explode. Um, the other thing is, um, if these batteries overheat, so if they're exposed to something that's really hot, uh, if you're on a hoverboard and you have a crash, uh, that could puncture the battery. Um, also, the batteries can, can be cheaply made. Um, there's something called thermal runaway, uh, where if the, the uh, separation uh, material between the anode and the cathode is just not aligned properly or isn't manufactured properly, uh, you can have a thermal runaway inside the battery, which, is, which causes it to overheat and then burst into fire. Also, so this is something that's really interesting about the hoverboards. Jason, open this box up here. Yes. And I'm not singling this uh, particular brand out, this model out, um, as a potential fire risk or not. Uh, but open the box up there. All right. And Jason's going to pull out while I'm doing this. I'm going to disconnect some of these cables here. So this is the charger that it comes with. Now, so you Mine would looks think. familiar. Yeah, you would think that you could just plug this up and leave this overnight, right? And then you'd have a nice brand new charged hoverboard in the morning. No, you can't do that. If you'll look, Jason, lift up some of the paper right there. There's a real little piece of paper, okay. And it says, important, do not charge hoverboard overnight or it risks exploding. Now, uh, you know, it's one thing, it's nice. I'm sure that the lawyers are very happy that they put this <laughs> piece of paper in there. But if you've got one of these for one of your kids and they just forget and leave it plugged up in the garage or in the living room, you know, that's probably not, uh, you know, it's not going to help you any because there's this piece of paper in there. Yeah. So 
All right, now we've it talked about the batteries. It's like almost kind of thing. It's saying, it's essentially saying, stay by this thing all the time when you're, uh, when you're charging it, right? Because it might burst into flames. Not very practical. Right, so we're going to pop off a few of these cables here. There's a lot of electronics actually inside these devices in order to make them work, right? There are things like, there's obviously cables connecting to the charging ports. There's LED lights on these things. There's actually quite a bit of uh, hardware that you might find in a smartphone or in other sort of movable devices. Um, there are at least three microcontrollers in here. There's one from uh, SD Microelectronics. There's two separate six axis gyroscopes. It, it's very hard to see, um, so I don't expect, but these chips here, one here and one here are actually um, Invensys Invincense six axis gyroscopes. And they're, they, they're what helps the um, scooter stay level uh, and balance itself. Um, also, the, the motors for these are inside the wheels. Uh, so if you took the wheels apart, you took these bolts out, you could see uh, the motors. And then down here, you'll see at least one arm. This is a, I believe a 78 uh, megahertz arm uh, Cortex M3 microcontroller, and then another set of microcontrollers, another two microcontrollers up there. So there's a lot of hardware inside these devices that help them go. Um, now while we're doing this, what we're going to do is I'm going to keep, keep, keep taking this apart to show you guys a little bit more of the hardware uh, that's inside. Now, like Jason said, we've been doing this for a really long time. We've taken apart everything yes. from uh, what iPhones, iPads and iPads, iPhones, and every uh, you know mobile device you can think of, every gaming can apart, console. And it open. And, and really, w there's a couple goals that we have when we're when we're doing these. You know, one is the curiosity factor. It is the idea of um, you know learning from the technology, learning about the design of these things. You can tell a lot about these products from the design. Um, I remember times Bill cracking something open and saying. Come look at this, you know, inside there's tape um, holding some of these devices together. I remember um, particularly a, an HTC device that you were not very impressed with that came to market very quickly and you could tell just by the way it was organized inside that this product was rushed to market. Um, you know, the, on the other hand, you can tell devices, um, not surprisingly, devices from um, companies like um, Samsung and Apple that you've often been very impressed with looking at, uh, at the design inside of the device. Um, so it's not universal, but every time that we do one of these devices, we learn a little bit about the company and about the, you know, the, what they put into um, the, the product. So we also uh, are looking at how well these devices can be repaired. If you uh, had the device um, break, if you had um, something that either through your own fault or something that was out of warranty and you wanted to try to repair it yourself, um, you know, we, we look at it and we try to give you some uh, idea of what you would do if a screen cracked, if, if a part um, had to be replaced on your own. And so uh, we give you a little bit of insight onto how easy or hard or even possible or not possible it would be to fix it on your own. Yeah, and it's a lot easier for me to sort of justify taking something like this apart than it is for somebody at home just to do it on their own. We um, do it so you don't have to. We do it so you don't have to. And later today... By we, I mean <laughs> this guy. So, sometimes these little plastic connectors are hard to get off. Um, but later today, we'll actually be doing something that we normally don't do. So we'll be taking apart an Apple Pencil. Uh, and in order to take apart the Apple Pencil, we will actually have to destroy it. Um, I'll be cutting it in half on the stage up here, which, that, uh, which should is, be fun. Th that is something, you know, not everybody um, is necessarily good at this kind of thing. If you have a lot of, you have to have a lot of patience, you have to have a certain amount of dexterity. Um, you know, Bill has been doing these, you know, since we started, he did the first ones. Um, he's the one who still does all of these. Um, because he has a lot of patience, he also kind of has like the hands of a surgeon, you know, very, uh, uh, very dexterous. Um, and you know, you're cracking these things open sometimes, especially if they have screens, it takes a while to, to figure out how to get them open. Uh, I, I mean, when we, first, we have a, a kind of a famous picture out there on the internet that when we were first trying to get the very first iPad apart, we had all kinds of things stuck down in there. What do you have, you like a spatula, you know, butter knife, you had all kinds of things. Now there are some tools that have come out, some nice tool sets from people like iFixit that you can go and you can get your own set of tools that can help you, you know, get these devices open. Um, but, uh, you know, I can count on the number of uh, fingers, you know, the, the amount of things you've actually 
yeah, taken apart that things. doesn't that have broken. We you also the put them back together because you're trying to learn from that, and then in what you pass on to uh, to people afterwards when yeah. you write it up. People often ask me, "Well, you ruined a perfectly good iPhone, or you ruined a perfectly good device." I say, "No, I usually don't. Um, you you can. There are plenty of people that will actually take devices down uh, to the chip substrate, you know, and to um, and destroy the devices. I don't do that." This one's really tough. We, we always, um, we always try to that. get them back together in working order uh, so that we can test them and so that we can use them. Um, so most, I always tell people that, and it makes them feel a little bit better, like we just didn't <laughs> trash the device. Now, the Apple Pencil, there's no way to do this uh, without breaking it. You can see here, this is the controller board for the device. Um, I, I don't want to cut through all the wires, I wouldn't do that. Um, but you can kind of see the complexity that, that it has here. Um, you can see the processor I showed earlier. And all these big things, these are the things that I try to stay away from. Um, a lot of these capacitors, uh, they can store power, I don't want to be touching all of those. Um, also, we try to be uh, really careful with our uh, electrostatic safety um, and our safety uh, in general when we're taking these things apart. We try to use uh, electrostatic ESD safe tools. Um, and that way, you know, we, we don't ruin the devices when we're, when we're taking them apart. I'm going to try and get the, um, these housing outs, there, there are, uh, these plastic pieces here to see what's under there. And this is a really great example. Sometimes when I take these devices apart, we know what's going to be inside them. Sometimes we don't know what's going to be inside them. Sometimes we're just sort of flying blind. Um, we don't know how they're going to come apart. And so we always take a lot of photos as we're going yeah. through the process to make sure, not just to show everybody what's inside them and talk about them, but to actually be able to put them back together again uh, when we're done with them and then you know use them. So uh, we, most of the most prominent devices, you know, you can go and see that process for most of the pro, you know, most prominent devices that are available on the market. Microsoft Surface, um, you know, iPads, iPhones, um, Samsung phones. You can see the whole process where Bill is taken apart and then he'll post a gallery, he'll do a video, and he'll often do an analysis post too where he is explaining oops, you know, oops, what sorry. he learned um, in the process. Keeping track of all these screws is not fun either. Um, some of these devices will use up to what? Three, four, five, six, oh, yeah. seven different kinds of screws. Um, Apple's the worst for that? Yes. If anyone from Apple is listening, please just use one type of screw. We can hope. Uh, so, I, has anybody here been hoping that this thing might burst into flames, that you might actually see it burst into flames? Yeah, me too. Um, so, we're, so we're safe so far. Um, but, you know, one of the things you may be wondering is why they call this a hoverboard, right? It's not act when it's not actually hovering. When I think hoverboard, I think of the thing that uh, Marty McFly in Back to the, Back Future, to the Future 2 was riding. It is 2015, or was 2015, right? Yes, yes. So, um, I don't know exactly why they call it a hoverboard, um, when in fact it's just sort of a wheeled skateboard, but uh, there it is. And sometimes you run into problems like this, um, this connector looks like it has glue on it of some kind. Yeah, it has a sealant on it, and they don't want to come loose, so you have to improvise as you're going along and pop it loose, otherwise I'll break the metal contacts, which I really don't necessarily want to do. That is, if you're doing it on, this, on your own, uh, like we were saying earlier, you know, patience is kind of the, the key. A lot of these things, they don't want to come, and your, uh, your inclination a lot of times is to force it. That would be what I would do. Like, I would never have the patience for it, but, you know, um, Bill and others that, that do these kinds of things, exactly, you know, just have enough patience that they keep working it little by little, uh, and then it comes apart. So, you, we can kind of see we've almost got this sort of broken down. I mean, you can kind of see most of the major components yeah. inside of it. If you guys can kind of see this, I'll show you all. Uh, you can see the wheels, you can see the mounting brackets here for the wheels, uh, the battery. We can see the large sort of circuit board here uh, mounted to its own sort of backing plate. Uh, you can see all the cables that run through it and how the uh, the swivels work here in the center and how these sort of balance themselves. I mean, it really is kind of a neat and interesting device. Has anybody out there actually ridden one of these? Anybody own what, one? Yeah. Did you, did you fall down at least once or twice? No, it was, Good. It was easy. Good. Pretty, pretty easy. I've never cool. actually ridden one of these things. So I really did think of, thought about 
trying to ride this before we came out here, um, but decided that I didn't want to risk the fire hazard before I had it. Something also interesting about these, um, you know, because of the lithium ion batteries, if you tried to move it around, the airline wouldn't let me bring it on the airplane to bring it out to Las Vegas. Uh, so I had to ship it ground, you know, it can't even go on an airplane or a boat. The first time um, we tried to ship it air, they sent it back. The first time we tried to ship it, they actually sent it back and said, no, you've got to put this on a truck. And I said, okay. Um, but it's, this is one of those things, this is probably one of the largest things we've uh, taken apart in the past year. Uh, I've done some really interesting things. In the CNET magazine, there were some copies of it out there. Uh, you can see one of our uh, teardowns. We've taken apart the Amazon Echo. Uh, we've taken one of the Parrot drones apart. Uh, we've taken apart a, uh, we've got a new one coming up in the next issue of the magazine that'll be really exciting, uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we've taken Connected apart- soccer ball? Yeah, um, we, we took apart an Adidas soccer ball, one of the My Coach um, Smart soccer balls. That was really cool because there's a lot of technology the same technology that's in here, right? These, um, the gyroscopes, um, the accelerometers, they're in the soccer ball, you can, and they're so small these days and they require so little power that you can put them in almost anything. You don't yes. need great big batteries like this anymore to, you know, to power those types of devices. So that's what makes technology like this popular. I mean, remember, this is basically, you know, a Segway. Right? It's just a smaller Segway. Now, you guys all remember when Segways first come out, how expensive they were. There's a reason you can buy this. So I bought this for 350 bucks at a grocery store, not even an electronic shop. You, you didn't have to go there. I walked into the grocery store and I said, oh, here's a big, you know, here's a big display of these things. So we were able to pick them up because, for that price because they're so, you know, the technology has come down in price so much since then that it's, you know, companies are able to make these things. Let's just hope they make them sort of uh, safely. You know, the last thing um, I'll leave you with before we sort of wrap up here is just these, the batteries like I talked about before. So if you do have one of these, what, should you throw it away? Should you not let your kids drive it? Um, not necessarily, I, I'm not saying that. I don't mean to say that all of these are unsafe. Um, but there are certain considerations you should have when you yes. buy them, right? So, for example, um, you shouldn't, if the manufacturer says you shouldn't charge it overnight, don't charge it overnight. Um, make sure that you're buying them from the, a reputable vendor, uh, from one that CNET has put out some reviews of them. Check that out. Um, make sure that you're buying them directly from the vendor and maybe not through a third party. Uh, if you do have one and you're concerned about it, you know, send it back, contact the reseller. Sometimes they'll give you their money back if it's a, um, a, a, a good vendor. For example, I know a lot of people that bought these from Amazon and they shipped yeah. them right back and Amazon gave them credits right away. Um, but do that. Uh, otherwise, you know, just use it safely and probably you know, don't keep it in your garage. <laughs> you know, keep, it, keep, it, keep it outside. Why not um, in the garage? Well, same, same reason, just don't keep it in the living room either. If, it, if someone were to leave it plugged up overnight uh, and it was to overheat and get overcharged, then it's a little bit safer if it starts a fire and it's outside or somewhere as opposed to being in your house or in your garage. And if, yeah. if you look at the news stories, you've seen the photos of people with these under the Christmas tree, right? With the Christmas tree and everything caught on fire. So that's the last thing I'll, I'll kind of say about that. Not to say that these are all unsafe, uh, that you should you know, immediately chuck the one you have, but just so that you're aware and you can make an educated decision as a consumer. How so. many people want to get in the audience want to get one of these? Anybody wanting to, to get one of these hoverboards? <laughs> Besides so the one guy who's already got one? Right, I mean, it's not to say that the technology itself is, the technology itself is not unsafe, other than falling off and bumping your head, right? Um, it's just that a lot of these are cheaply made, um, they come from the quality control during the manufacturing process isn't as tight as it should be on the batteries or on the rest of the components. So you haven't really heard of a lot of fires with Segways, right? Or you don't hear you know, of a lot of fires anymore with laptop batteries these days. It's because the manufacturing processes for those batteries are tighter, the quality controls are tighter. And so that's why you, know, you just have to know where you're buying them from.